Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are y'all this morning? Um, it is um, day five of our lesson plan on the seven stages. And today we're going to talk about stage six and stage seven. And both of those are severe cognitive decline and very severe cognitive decline. Um, remember that the, the, the scale that we're talking about is the global deterioration scale and it is a cognitive scale. The functional scale is represented in the FAST scale, the F-A-S-T, but we're going to talk about some um, of both the cognitive and the functional losses um, today for stage six and seven. I'm going to combine them. Okay, so we're at the end. These are considered the end stages. Um, uh, usually at this point, um, your person is already um, in a care facility or they are at home with 24-hour care sitters um, or maybe sitters, you know, you're with them during the day and the sitter is with them at night or vice versa um, or um, they are in your home. Usually though by six, they can no longer live independently. Now that means um, they cannot do their own self-care. Um, their memory is such that um, they are more in, more really um, in an infantile um, memory stage. They're, they're remembering their old, old memory. By six, they, they usually don't know, you know, their, um, their husband, um, his name or his role, their children, their names or their roles. They might recognize um, uh, the names and talk more about their siblings because in their mind they're probably five, six, seven. Um, in their mind maybe, they don't, they've not yet become a mother. So they don't yet have children to attend to, a home to attend to, a husband to attend to, a wife to attend to. And um, so their, their, their focus um, gets very low on the Maslow scale as far as just um, you know, they're not thinking about um, anything higher than just, you know, food, water, shelter. You know, those are their basic needs. Um, they do have need for companionship, all of those things, but it's, it's not expressed usually. Um, they get very self-aware, um, very um, self-centered, not in an egotistical way. I don't mean it like that, but I mean they're very centered on their self. They mumble to themselves. They... Uh, pat and rub themselves. They pat their own legs. They'll pick their feet up and move their feet closer to them and play with their feet a lot. Um, it's a very infantile looking stage and people don't all the time put those two things together. You know that they're in the bed and they're they're kind of in a fetal position, especially in seven. Um, they they just they're just regressing. They're just regressing um, and um, it's to me, it's important to know that because people, um, you know, start saying, you know, mama just won't hold her head up. You know, it's, it's kind of this thing, or it's a, it's a, you know, this kind of thing. You, you see them at the table, and it's like this, or they're kind of like one of this, or they're just, you know, it's just that kind of, um, that kind of um, presentation. They flat affect. Um, they very rarely smile um, in six or seven. They. Um, will respond to stimuli, they will smile at you, they will close their eyes and, and it seems as if they're enjoying if you're singing to them or if you're talking to them or reading to them. Um, they respond to that non-verbally. Um, in six, they can still be verbal, um, but you know, a lot of times you're not going to understand you know, what they're trying to communicate in six. Um, in six, they become totally incontinent, where they don't understand the urges. They don't know what that means, an urge to go to the bathroom. They don't act on that urge in any way. Um, that's all in six. In seven, you definitely, I mean, you get to where, you know, they, they are no longer really able to hold their head up on their own, and it's always in a recline um, or a complete decline like this. Um, and so a lot of times at that point we uh, use, especially in the facilities, and you can get these in, in the home if you're on hospice or home health care, well, uh, it's called a jerry chair, and it's like a more of a stiff recliner, um, and so it gives the, them, their bodies a lot of support. Um, it supports their back really well, and it allows for that natural gravity of the head to go backwards. Um, we use, you can use um, a child's um, 
travel pillow that goes either around their neck this way, but a lot of put them, I don't, I don't have, I don't have one in here, but you know, they'll put it behind their neck so it supports their neck a little more, or they'll put it in front of their neck if they have a natural falling forward and it, and it supports their, their neck a little bit. Um, it's just, it's just, it's, it is human development in reverse. That is what it is. And when you see it that way, it makes more sense to you, in my opinion. I have seen, when I explain it to people in the homes, um, and, you know, just explain it, they're like, yeah, that's exactly what she looks like. She looks like a, a toddler, not a toddler, an infant, um, you know, in all the way, in, in her full presentation. It's, it's just like a grown infant. So, sorry, these are rough stages. These are rough stages. The solace that I find is that they are generally, generally absolutely unaware um, of um, any anxiety. They don't usually hold any anxiety in their body. They don't hold any um, tension, um, you know, unless there's some pain, and they will give you not indicators of pain. Um, you know, wincing, guarding, holding a certain area. We'll talk about that next week, we, and it's in the book, um, what that looks like. At this stage, you deal with uh, not wanting to eat as much, not wanting to drink, not having a thirst or a hunger, um, and you just have to, you know, offer, 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 um, offer a lot of water, um, you know, offer, you know, offer food to eat. But at six, sometimes they just don't want to eat. Usually, their swallow is to the point where they're on pureed food. So again, it's like baby food. Um, and they will take the sweet things over the vegetables. They will take the bananas and the apples, and just like a baby does. A baby does exactly the same thing. A baby doesn't want necessarily, if, you know, if you're feeding them, you know, you have to hold the applesauce to last because they'll eat the applesauce and won't eat any beans, or won't eat any carrots or any sweet potatoes. They're going to eat the apples and the bananas and the peaches first, right? And we don't think anything about that when babies. We just know that that's how babies are. And so we need to get to the same point, living in the same grace with people with dementia in stage six and seven. We need to support um, who they are now, you know, giving reference and respect to the people that they have been, but taking care of the people they are now and not bringing any judgment into that, not bringing any sorrow into that. You can be sad. Being sad is about you. Having sorrow is about them. I don't treat them with sorrow. Um, I don't take into the room a feeling of um, you're so bad. You're so you're so you know you're so low. You're so um, debilitated. You're so whatever. I don't take that into the room with me. I don't take that into the interaction with me. I take into the interaction. I love you just like you are. I love you so much, and I'm going to care for you as long as you're here. Um, and we're going to do happy things and fun things and um, gentle things. And, you know, just like you were with a baby. You know, with a baby, you don't go in, you don't feel sorry for them because they can't eat a steak. You know, you just accept that they can't eat a steak. They're a baby. So in this way, I, to me, it just makes so much sense. And I'm just about common sense and just about approaching things in a common sense way. Um, and so you go into an interaction with a baby with a lot of expectation of love and wonder. Um, and I'm so happy to be in your presence. I'm so happy to have a new baby in my arms. Whether it's your own baby or a grandbaby or a, a niece or a nephew or you know something like that, I'm so happy to be in your presence. That's what I take into each person that I see. Um, if they're in six and seven as a baby, I mean, as, a, as an adult. Um, seven, um, they're usually nonverbal in seven. They're no longer able to manage a smile in seven. They are very, um, uh, their presentation is very much in a fetal position. They usually in seven are bed fast and they don't really get up to a jerry chair. Sometimes they do. They're, they get very rigid. Um, their arms, they're, they, they contract. And we try to, you know, do things in the nursing home to keep them from contracting, but it just is bad. Their ankles lock. Um, their knees contract. Their arms and hands and elbows contract. And, you know, you'll start seeing a presentation like this. Um, it's just the body doing its thing. 
they uh, in seven usually don't have an appetite they usually don't express thirst at all this gets us to one of the biggest um, decisions that um, people have to make in seven and so I want to head it hit it straight on knock it straight on the head and uh, talk about it is whether or not my mother my daddy my husband my wife my uncle my brother should have a feeding tube um, that could have its own segment um, but what I want to reiterate while we're talking about seven is that you know they've done study after study research after research and they don't seem to be able to um, establish a thirst hunger urge it's just not there anymore and I think it is the body's natural way of shutting down all of the body um, you know they're just um, they're, all of their energy is pulling in to support their major organs and they just don't seem to have a, uh, a thirst hunger um, uh, response so you know then you're faced with okay well they can no longer swallow safely and we can no longer even give them pureed food and the thickest thickened liquids and we have to make a decision about tea feeding that is a very very personal decision but people ask my opinion on it all the time and so I'm giving you my opinion if it were my mother if it were my father I would not deny them heaven um, that's my thought um, maybe it's because I've had a seizure over the night but I'm just very open right now about the way I feel about things I'm, I'm not trying to put them behind a um, cloud um, put them behind any kind of um, you know false hope um, they, these are the end stages the dementia Alzheimer's dementia and other types of dementia are terminal diseases there will be there will be a natural end I don't see postponing that end with that with artificial measures um, that is my personal opinion my professional opinion is that you need to get all the information you can you need to read up on it don't put your head in the sand read 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 there are articles everywhere about that read hospice um, uh, abstracts talk to people in hospice um, they can help guide you as well okay today I knew it was going to be a heavy day I hate that we had to do it on a Friday um, what I want to leave you with are some positives there's still a soul in a person um, in six and seven and you can connect with that soul yesterday we talked about the love connection the um, the the uh, peace connection calm connection all of those uh, things um, and that's what I want a soul connection to be. I want it to be love, peace, calm, um, all of those things. And yesterday our homework was to talk about how we could um, establish things that would meet them down in the lower, lowest stages. By having a familiar lotion, having a familiar scent, having um, a song that you share or a passage that you read, a book, you know, maybe a child's book uh, or maybe a book with very few words um, that, you know, you can read in just a few minutes that um, connects you to that person um, and then doing those things hearing those words um, hearing that tone in your voice smelling what you smell like um, you know having the, your touch um, will linger down into all the way into seven it has happened to me I know that it happened um, we just have to take time to make it happen um, we can't just think okay well because she can't communicate with me um, I, you know, she doesn't need communication from me um, so that is true they have got to have connection from you even if they can't communicate with you they need communication from you um, and that's not always verbal you know it's, it's pats it's scratching your back it's rubbing your back it's rubbing their knees rubbing their elbows um, um, rubbing their ankles um, all of those things you know painting their fingernails putting on their lipstick still I'm going to want lipstick all the way down in seven. In fact, I have told my mortician, uh, who's a very good friend of mine, that I want a full open gasket because I want to show my shoes and everything. I have a sense of humor about it um, because I don't fear death. Um, the other thing is, um, I think that we just need to play in all the stages. All the stages have, have room for play and love and laughter, um, all of those things. I know this is a hard one. I'm so sorry. Um, but at the same time, I want you to be um, prepared, right? 
Okay, I love y'all. I will post this at 10 o'clock, okay? I love y'all. If you have any questions, if you need to private message me, because this is a sensitive subject, feel free to, free to private message me. I will be resting most of the day today since I had the seizure last night, um, but I will be online, okay? All right, I love y'all. Talk to you later. Bye.